Okay, here is front number one. And the first instructions suggest that we e-stitch right here between the two notches, a single stitch on each piece. It doesn't matter which side you stitch on. Put your uh, machine on a long stitch, a long stitch length, maybe a four or five, depending on your machine, and just stitch close to the edge, maybe a quarter inch. So it gathers up slightly. You can see how it's just gathered a little bit. I've already done that. And here is the side front. So this is already on my right side. These are right sides together. And you've got notches that match up. So you have a notch here. Pin your notches first. Pin your in the, um, the edge seams next. And then you want to fill in. Now this is a curve being stitched into another curve. And you can do it. You get used to. All right, so I'm going to pin here at the bottom. Now, if you're making a really long shirt, you can pull it down and pin it and then just pin right here in the middle. You just want to keep, keep your pinning balanced so that you, know, you get a straight seam. And this goes right here. So line up those two little ledges. And then you just want to turn this and kind of ease it in, like pin in the middle. And it does fit. It, there's no magic to it. It does fit. That's why you do that E stitch on piece number one first. If you look at it, you see how it sits up because it's pretty even here. It's not like straight stitching. And then when you stitch it, you got to follow that curve. So I'm just going to fill in some pans because now I'm just straight stitching. And we're five eighths inch, same allowance. I'm going to start, I'll start on this side, stitch, and then come up or keep, stay on the curve. And then you end right here. So I'll do the other one. Line up the notches and pin first. to just ease it in. Amy, there's no easing in quilting, is there? Not really. Sometimes, I mean, sometimes there are curves. Okay. And, but usually they fit together right. very symmetrically. Right. Which pieces are you doing again there, Nikki? This is piece number one and piece number two, the front. Okay, thank you. Okay. So I'm gonna stitch here all the way down. Let's go over to the machine. So we've got both pieces stitched. Can you see how it sits in its own curve? You stitch it on. And there's no such thing as too many pins. So stitch, take your pins out as you go. And then when you go to the ironing board, this is what it looks like. It's really flat and it's nicely curved in. Now this seam, Amy, you were probably talking about this earlier. This piece is gonna be right here. You can snip that off just to keep your armhole um, smooth. But if you... And you're pressing... The notches are already there to give you some you know, easing on the, on the curve. And 
because we are working with uh, lightweight linen, you're gonna cut this way down because okay. this is not what you want right here. Yeah. Right? You don't wanna see that, okay? Um, I am, don't, don't pay attention, too much attention to this, but I'm gonna French seam mine. I'm gonna turn it over the other side and um, stitch it again. I'm gonna cut the seam way down and turn it on the other side and stitch it. So uh, it won't have any seam at all. So when you press up, down, motion only with the iron. Open the seam, not none of this, especially linen. You don't wanna you know, stretch the linen out. See that weave? It will go wherever that iron tells it with heat and steam. So just up, down motions on your linen and your seam will lay out flat. Okay, Thank so you. that's- What's the French seam that you're gonna do? Okay, I'll show you. So this is really my um, right side. And I'm gonna stitch really close to the seam. So when you do a French seam, you, sti you stitch your two pieces of fabric together wrong side. Now this will be helpful if you have a really thin, um, lightweight white linen and you don't wanna see those seams. Now, if you have a serger that does a really beautiful, you know, rolled edge, and you won't see any seams, you know, you can do that. All right, so here's my, here's my right side of my fabric. And I have an exposed seam here. This is how I stitch it together. I cut it way down. And then I'm gonna do right sides together. And I'm gonna do another stitch. You see that? And, mm -hmm. then, and underneath, I can see where my seam is. And it's yeah. very, very narrow. So I'm going to stitch right at a quarter because that's how far down I cut the seam down. I'm going to press it just a tap. Okay, and I'm gonna go stitch this together as if it were my right side, original. Center back though, right? <laughs> Center back, yes, exactly. Okay. All right, so here's pieces three and four and we're gonna put those together. All right, so piece number three, the back has a center back seam. You got three notches here, so you don't even need to move the fabric, just stitch down here. If you're gonna have a vent, I doubt if any of them have it, you can definitely do that. And then piece number four is the same concept. There's a notch there and you're gonna stitch from here all the way down. Not as steep a curve. Amy, did yours fit okay when you did this piece? Yeah, the second one went a little bit better than the first one. Okay, all right. But I think now I, I know where I should, went wrong. Okay. I think I stopped sewing too soon before I reached the edge. I see. Okay. But I, so, I think um, 
Yeah, just pin it. There's no such thing as too many pins, you know, pin it and and don't pull your pins out too soon and then you'll just come off. Okay. So we're going to stitch the center back and put the sides on the back. And is the key to avoiding little tucks, you know, just to go slow and make sure that you've eased it in really well? Because I, I do have a few places where, you know, I almost have like these little tucks. Little uh, crinkles. Yeah. The fabric was, it, are you talking specifically on the curved edge? Yes. Yeah. And the key to preventing that is using pins to pin the fabric and make sure it lays flat on each side. Okay. okay. Let me do one here. Start with your notch. Your notch is like the puzzle piece. The two pieces of fabric go right there. And then come to the top edge. And just lay that straight where it meets it. Go to the bottom. And even though the curve is not as steep as the, the front, it's still a curve. So kind of respect it and, and make sure you pin in the middle and then pin in the middle here and then go to the other side. I hate these pins. Okay, you want more pins here so you can make sure you don't get those crinkles. Is that cool? Yes. Okay, so I just want to pin that on there and I'm gonna put the back and the side backs together. Uh oh, that's not what I wanted to do. So here's the back put together. Yeah, the center back seam and the two sides. You want to make sure you press these nicely. And remember, if you are making a muslin, these are the only pieces you need to put together to test your fit, the body of the shirt. And Nikki, if you said we were going to do a test fit even with our correct fabric, we would do adjustments based on our waist, our, our side seams, right? You mean if you had to make adjustments, you could do them on the side seams? Right. That that's where you, that's where you would pick, not the princess seams, right? Yes. Okay. Right. So just put your, put the body of the shirt together, put your shoulders together, the side seams and pin based or pin the band on the front. So you can have the actual overlap of the front so that you can judge how the body of the shirt fits you. So if you make it a muslin, that's what I suggest doing. Okay. So I'll stop here and let everyone, you know, just focus on getting the, the front and the back together. The next step would be putting the shoulders together. And put, put in the shoulder seams of each piece together. Are you French seaming those too? The shoulder seams? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to do both. And then um, we'll go to the sleeve. All right. So if you have a, uh, a knee to the can you hear me now? I remember. Yeah. You know what? I remember you talk, talked to us yesterday about the elongation strip. Right, the, the double the area where we lengthen. elongate and shorten. Right here. So cut it. Right. Okay, lengthen it an inch. A piece of paper underneath, tape it back down and do all your pattern pieces like that. And they should 
line up in that same place because this length and a shortened line is in the same place on each of the patterns. That's right. And then it gives us the right contour. Okay. I remember that. Thank you. Right. You don't want to disturb the integrity of your pattern. 